Hello friends, this is David Sami with a Christian Journey. <clears throat> I wanted to apologize that I didn't record anything last week. I was going to actually do another topic, a different topic, but I decided to change and uh, make this one. You know, with everything that's going on in our society, I always wanted to do a series on what is the predominant philosophy in our culture and how it impacts Christianity. You see, every culture has a philosophical point of view that gives the culture its sense of direction, values, and in a way it kind of guides the culture. But what is the predominant philosophical point of view, what is the world view that is most influential in our country and Western culture as a whole. And um, on part two, on next week, I wanted to get more deeper into how it is impacting the Christianity that we have in our country and how maybe to a certain extent it's directing the new generation of Christian in a way that maybe the former generation of Christians might have not put as much emphasis on. But um, what is the dominant? What is the dominant philosophical view that guides our country and Western culture? That is called secularism. Secularism. Secularism is the umbrella that all the other sub-philosophical point of view kind of hinge on there. But many of the things that we're going to talk about today, I am actually indebted to the lectures by late Dr. R.C. Sproul. He had lectures on secularism and its relationship to Christianity. He has a <clears throat> wonderful book called World Views, which I think every Christian should read, because it gives us a sense, a grasp of what is the thinking behind our society and how we can fit into this society but not become part of it, but yet be able to understand where is it coming from and where is its values, what is the value of the culture. Now, the word secularism actually comes from a Latin word secular. Secular means this world, here and now, this place in time. But when you put the ism at the end of the secular, you make it to become a worldview, a philosophical way of looking at life that is on basis of here and now. Secularism would more or less would say that this world is all there is. We cannot go beyond this realm to know for sure whether there is a God or not. And if there is one, is it a Christian God? Is it a Muslim God? Is it a Hindu God? Because we cannot go to the other realm, we are in this realm. And this is what it matters. All access to the other realm is closed. So what matters is here and now. Now, because of that, morals and values in secularism become relative. Because there is no absolute authority that we can go to and discuss what is right, what is wrong. So if this world is all there is, Moral and values become relative. It would be based on the society that you grow up, based on your family structure, maybe based on the religion that your family embraces. So it's all relative. But nobody can claim the absolute truth or the absolute correctness because there is no judge, there is no arbitrate that we can go to and actually decide the matter. So if there is no absolute being that tell us what's right or wrong, all views basically become relative. 
And if that would be too true, the greatest virtue in secularism is tolerance. Tolerance. Tolerance not in the way that we would think of, that we tolerate other opinions or opinions that are different than us, but tolerance in a way that all points and all philosophical point of view are equally valid. It may be true for you because you embrace it. No, I don't embrace it. I maybe embrace something else, but I cannot tell you that your opinion is wrong because after all, there is no arbitrary. There is no judge. So you can decide to believe certain things and I have no right to tell you that you are wrong. You see, Truth would not be as important as respect for other people's opinion. It's almost like we don't want to get to absolute truth because there are no absolute truth, only relativity. But it can be true if you believe it and that's your prerogative and you can do that. Now, it's funny because if even back in time, say about 50, 60 years ago, and maybe you were in the lunchroom in, at work, and you were talking to someone about the subject of religion, and you in America said, okay, I think that Jesus is the only way to God. And if there are other people sitting in that lunchroom, really nobody would take offense to that. And for the most part, that was the assumption. But how today, if you say that at work, chances are somebody would take offense to that and you may even get yourself in trouble for making that a statement. But did the statement become wrong or is it because the culture has changed and is no longer tolerable and acceptable in the commonplace, maybe at work, to express that Jesus is the only way to God? So. In my judgment, secularism and biblical Christianity are irreconcilable. They cannot be meshed together. Something has to give. But here are some point of differences between secularism and biblical Christianity. I make that point of biblical Christianity. You see, in the first place, how do we decide what's right or wrong? You know, wrong or right in a secular society sometimes are determined by the majority, by what the majority feels or the sentiment that the majority have, or sometimes even by the preferences. Maybe a society would accept certain preferences and then it becomes acceptable. It's no longer taboo or it's no longer considered wrong. But in the biblical Christianity, Wrong or right, I determine by God. It isn't based on a popular opinion, or it isn't based on the majority, or how we may feel things. But wrong or right are given to us by God, by that final authority. And how do we determine our values? You know, in biblical Christianities, values are fixed. They are not relative. And this will bring biblical Christianity in direct conflict with secularism. You know, it's interesting, I was listening to this pastor that he was talking about the groups that go to university and try to promote Christianity that in the past they were tolerated or, you know, people maybe disagree with their views. But now the sentiment has shifted it's no longer disagreement, but your views as biblical Christianity is dangerous. It's harmful to society at large because it places absolute dogma over people's choices and how they want to live their lives. So we see actually a shift even in the way that maybe people who are secular, they might not consider themselves that, but they may definitely embrace the principles of secularism, whether they realize it or not, view biblical Christianity. And 
as the country becomes more and more secular as it begins to follow on that path the gap becomes more and more widened that biblical Christianity becomes irreconcilable to secularism but the biggest question is what do we do do we change do we remain the same and what are some of the answers that the new Christians are given in light of this gap that is being created? I wanted to focus more on that on the next time and to see how maybe we are watching a reinventing of Christianity in order to fit into society that is secular. You see, a secular society has no problem with the Jesus who wants to make life better for humanity at large. But it begins to have problem with the Jesus who has moral absolutes and begin to tell us right or wrong and begin to kind of show us a fixed morality. That's when we have a problem with that kind of Christianity because we want to be able to choose for ourselves what is good, what is bad and be able to decide without having some authority to define to us what is right or wrong. This makes us feel bad. So next time I want to talk more about how this secularism is impacting Christianity but one final closing comment is that most of us we begin to get bombarded every day by conflicting information conflicting worldviews like we some of us our views we go to church we get one view we go to colleges and universities and we begin to get a different view we listen to media outlet that might present us yet another view. <clears throat> but when we get all of these views coming at us all at once, it begins to create instability in us. We cannot be sure for certain what is right or what is wrong. And we begin to kind of mix all of these things and come up with our own ideas of how to relate to the world and how to see the world through what lens and how far do we go into deciding the matters of ethics or values but you see that's where our problem begins and that's where I see most Christians when they send their kids to colleges and universities and the kid goes to university and four years later come out with completely different point of views and the parents wonder what happened what happened to our kid it totally changed. Why? Well, because it got influenced by secularism <clears throat> and by secular teachers and secular professors. Now what is interesting about secularism is that most seculars are not necessarily atheistic but they're mostly agnostic. Most of them would say that we don't know if there is a God or not because we can't go to the other realm. So maybe there is one, maybe there isn't. But at this point in time, we cannot know for sure whether there is a God or not. But as a whole, secularism presents an anti-religion sentiment. It's almost like it's very skeptical of religion and it does not want religion to present itself as a force in society, in a schools, or things of that nature. As long as you keep religion in the four walls of your church, we have no problem with that. But as long as you remember, it has no place in the public arena. But when you bring it into public arena, that's when we begin to have our problems. So this was just a short overview of what I think is the predominant philosophical view. The lens that our culture sees things through is secularism. Secularism. 
we have entered into a post Christian era that Christianity at large is not the main driving force in the country we have many Christians in the US but the main mover and shaker in society as far as a philosophical point of view is secularism but next time we want to watch and discuss a little bit about how it's influencing Christianity and how far we can go beyond before losing who we are where is that line that we should say this line is the line in the sand that I will not cross over because when I cross over that line as a Christian I begin to lose who I am and that's a heavy price to be paid just to fit in a secular society so until next time may the Lord be with you may he keep you may he watch over you and give you peace this is David Sami with the Christian journey